Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm painting this beautiful, loose um, marshland scene with a river running behind the reeds and a distant bank and this lovely winter tree. There's a reference photo on Patreon, so if you're interested in that, please follow the link below. So I roughly sketched out uh, the position of my tree and my reed, just with a few quick scribbles with the pencil. Um, and I'm going to wet the page all over using my Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler brush, but any large wash brush will do. I'm going to be leaving a few streaks of paper dry, hopefully to give me an interesting sky and maybe give me some starting textures across my um, landscape area. This is a watery mix of raw sienna, so I'm going to get a little bit of a glow in the sky uh, for one of those beautiful winter days where the light's quite intense but sort of has that kind of glow. Um, and I'm going to strengthen up the colour a little bit with some sort of diagonal brush strokes, just big rough brush strokes in the foreground to start off the shape of my reeds, bringing in stronger paint for some stronger marks because I'm hoping to add some salt textures a little bit later so I want the paint to be fairly rich. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue and cerulean blue and I'm streaking it across my page using a large size um, 20 mop brush this is. It's um, an Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush it's a lovely brush for painting with so i'm running this blue in and around the raw sienna strengthening it up across the top because i'm painting wet in wet and my board's at a slight angle of about sort of uh, i think about 15 20 degrees there's a little bit of run of the paint down the page but not too much i didn't want too much today which is why the board's at a fairly shallow angle and this is a piece of Saunders Waterford cold pressed watercolour paper, 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. And it's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. And as I say, the, mas um, the board is at an angle of about 15 to 20 degrees, so a, a shallower angle than usual. You can see that I've introduced some burnt umber and some burnt sienna in to build up those lovely reed shapes and colours. And now scraping through with the palette knife um, to produce some beautiful reed shapes bending in the wind. So I'm looking for dark marks and light marks as I scrape through the paint um, and getting that lovely texture. And then putting on a bit of a horizon line just with a mixture of my blue colour with some raw sienna. And now for some ordinary fine table salt, just a little bit of it sprinkled across the foreground reed area. And that should hopefully just give me a little bit of texture, a bit of something and nothing, a bit of sort of additional flowers and weeds and maybe some highlights as the salt pushes the paint away and creates little blooms and lovely patterns. And now it's time to let this dry completely. Here it is, it's dry. Um, the colours are a lot richer and brighter than this in real life. The sun is bleaching the colour out a little bit in my studio. One of these days I'll get a nice studio, if I'm lucky, uh, where I can set the lighting appropriately and have the paintings looking a bit more natural. But hopefully you get an idea and I'll show you a picture at the end um, of how it looks um, in real life. Um, I've got a few little stray bits of salt that have, have gone into the sky. Not many, but I really like that. It's given me the really pretty effect of maybe some, some of the sort of seeds from the reed heads sort of blowing across the sky. And it's adding movement and life, and I really like it. Um, so now painting the tree really is the most important thing to do and then just a few finishing touches here and there. So for the tree I've mixed up a lovely dark blackish brown from my ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of raw sienna and burnt umber. Uh, just all of those colours more or less mixed together and that gives me a colour that's in harmony with the rest of the colours that are of the painting because they are the colours that I've used for all parts of the painting. 
Um, I could have just used a shop-bought black, that would have been quite striking, but there's something a little bit subtler about using um, a dark that's mixed from all your previous colours. This is a size 1 Pro Art uh, rigger brush, and I'm using it to make sure that I keep my trunk and branch trunks and branches all fairly sort of light and fine. Um, I want this to be sort of quite a delicate tracery of branches because I'm not going to be putting any leaves on as this is a, a winter tree. Um, so I'm trying to make sure that uh, the brush works really loose. And while it's a little bit difficult to control, the rigger brush will give you beautiful loose brushwork because of the the long hairs they're quite sort of um, springy and whippy and so if you can practice using it you can get beautiful fine strokes and if you trust the fact that even if the brush hits miss hits and misses the paper and skips about a bit slightly uncontrollably that doesn't matter because you can use that and build up the brush strokes to create quite uh, convincing fine twigs at the end that kind of look a bit blurry and some of your hit and miss dry brush marks will sort of add depth to the tree. While the paint's wet with trees I always like to scrape through with a plastic card or a palette knife which is my sort of um, tool of choice for this job these days and what that does is that just moves the paint around a bit. I'm more or less painting with the tip of the palette knife and scraping through the paint to add texture. And that's giving me the look of branches growing out from the front, front and around the back of, of some of the trees and branches. I'm just going to build up just a few subtle darks. I don't want too many darks in this, in the reeds. So coming up over the tape across the bottom so that when the tape's removed, um, it looks like the reeds are going out of the picture. Just pulling up between some of the uh, marks that were created with the paint and the palette knife earlier, a few, a few sort of subtle darks. Uh, the salt has completely dried and has given me really subtle effects today, but lovely, lovely light effects. And I've brushed off any remaining salt from the painting. And now just um, a slightly darker green uh, mixed up from raw sienna, touch of burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue. Um, and this is a size 14 round brush by Skoda Perla. And I'm pulling across uh, just the impression on the horizon of some winter stands of winter trees. Those are a bit dark, so I'm going to use um, a tissue or paper towel in a moment just to knock them back. I'm making sure the horizon's nice and straight. because I want them fairly pale in the distance and sort of cooler tones and that should help them to recede back into the distance. Just a bit more behind the tree as well. Just make sure that I've got my river fairly straight. Um, but I'm, what's important here is that the reeds come up slightly over the river um, and you can just see the river through the reeds. Then a few finishing touches, just scraping through the base of the tree with the palette knife to sort of integrate it into the uh, reed bed a bit more. And then I'm going to just dot in a few burnt sienna uh, reed heads and seed heads here and there, not too much. If they go on a little bit dark, um, using the tips of the rigger brush, then I can, again, use a tissue or a paper towel to dab them off and soften them back. But that tiny little bit of suggested detail here and there, I think will just add a nice sort of finishing touch amongst the salt textures.
So I'm just about finished with this painting. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, there's very few elements in it, but I think it comes together to be quite a pleasing painting and the colours really do glow in real life. Um, it's a shame that the colours are bleached out in the studio, but I'm hoping that you can sort of imagine how it looks and I'll show you um, a photograph at the end. So I'm going to remove the tape and in removing the tape we get to see it looking almost as if it's got a frame and a mount or a mat. Um, it sort of makes it look more complete and that's one of the reasons I like using tape is that we can see it at the end as a more complete piece. And then we can make any final adjustments. I think I'm just going to make a few slight adjustments to the tree. A quick glaze of the dark over the lower trunk areas will just darken it up and put those areas into shadow a little bit more. Just a few more branches as well, just to finish it off. And finally, using a size four round brush and a bit of white gouache, um, just a few highlights really subtly along the river at the top. And that will just, just make it stand out very slightly. It hardly notices, but I think it just is that finishing touch that really brings the painting together. So here's the finished painting. I really like the simple but um, harmonious colours and here are how the colours look in real life and you can see what I mean about that beautiful glow that we get from um, cerulean and ultramarine blue mixed together along with that lovely raw sienna in the sky and it just gives us that beautiful um, that sort of light late afternoon that sort of golden hour glow across the marshland. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And click on the bell if you want to be notified whenever we post. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Um, we really do appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we couldn't uh, run this channel without you. So thank you so much. So I'll see you again soon. Take care. Have a lovely weekend and happy painting. Bye.